celebration this afternoon, I want to express how very delighted I am to be here at St. Mary's in Champlain with all of you, from St. Mary's as well as from St. Patrick's and Rouse's Point. I've already had the privilege of meeting with our 31 candidates, young men and women who have received the gift of the Holy Spirit. They're a wonderful group. I've met them and their sponsors, and I know they're well prepared for this afternoon. It's also a great joy, as always, for me to be here with the Pastor of St. Mary's, Father, Father Seymour, a wonderful priest of our diocese, and also another wonderful priest of our diocese, Father Lewis, Pastor of St. Patrick. So it's a joy for me to be with them, and I thank them for their graciousness and their hospitality. Also, <coughs> also with Father Cote, Pastor of St. Joseph's in Coopersville, uh, my own priest secretary, Father Lucian, whom I told you about before. So we come together this afternoon thankful to God for the many blessings which he has given to us, especially the blessing of our lives and our faith, and the blessings of these wonderful young people. We now raise our hearts and our voices in prayers as we begin as we always do. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. And also with you. Dear friends, this water will be used to remind us of our baptism. Let us now ask God to bless it and to keep us faithful to the spirit which he has given us. Lord God Almighty, creator of all life, of body and soul, we ask you to bless this water as we use it in faith. Forgive our sins and save us from all illness and the power of evil. Lord, in your mercy, give us living water always springing up as a fountain of salvation. Free us, body and soul, from every danger, and admit us to your presence in purity of heart. Grant this through Christ our Lord.
Father, help us to keep in mind that Christ our Savior lives with you in glory and has promised to remain with us until the end of time. We ask this for our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. First reading is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter stood up in the midst of the brothers. There was a group of about 120 persons in one place. He said, My brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke before him through the mouth of David, concerning Judas, who was the guide for those who arrested Jesus. He was numbered among us, and was allotted to share in this ministry. For it is written in the book of Psalms, May another take his office. Therefore, it is necessary that one of the men who accompanied us the whole time the Lord Jesus came and went among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day on which he was taken up from us, become with us a witness to his resurrection. So they they proposed to Judas called Barsabbas, who is also known as Justice, and Messiah. Then they prayed, You, Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this apostolic ministry, from which Judas turned away to go to his own place. Then they gave lots to them, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was counted with the eleven apostles. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God.
Jesus prayed, saying, Holy Father, keep them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one, just as we are one. When I was with them, I protected them in your name that you gave me, and I guarded them, and none of them was lost except the son of destruction, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you. I speak this in the world so that they may share my joy completely. I gave them your word, and the world hated them, because they do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. Consecrate them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I sent them into the world. And I consecrated myself for them so that they also may be consecrated in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. I would ask the candidates for confirmation to please stand. Bishop Barrito, as pastor of St. Mary's Parish, and on behalf of Father Lewis, pastor of St. Patrick's Parish, I present to you these candidates for the sacrament of confirmation. I'd like to let you know, Bishop, that they have fulfilled all of the requirements that we have asked of them over these past several months and years, and we believe that they are worthy of the sacrament. So I ask that you accept them for the sacrament. to me on your behalf as well as that of Father Clyde, these wonderful, wonderful 31 young people from St. Mary's and from St. Patrick's, to whom in just a few minutes I will have the privilege of giving the gift of God, Holy Spirit, and Sacrament of Confirmation. I know that what you say is the truth. They have worked hard over the past years in preparation for this day. They are well, well, well ready for what they are about to receive. They make us all proud by being willing to stand forth and profess their belief in Christ and to be willing to continue to live as followers of Christ in the church. And so I'm delighted to be here in Champlain this afternoon and give them the gift of the Holy Spirit. I have joy as I said before of meeting them, and they are truly a very fine group. We come together, all of us, as a family this afternoon, a family which is the church, because that is what the church is all about. And as a family which is the church, whether we're from Rouse's Point or whether we're from Champlain, we center our faith on Christ and we relate to one another. We relate to one another as members of the church in different ways. We also come together as members of individual families with our young people present at the confirmation. And as members of families, we also relate to one another as in different ways. Husband to wife, young person to parent, brother to sister, friend to friend. Relationships. Relationships are what life is all about. Our being in relationship with other people is what gives meaning and purpose to life. Think about it. We don't live in isolation. We don't live by ourselves. We live with and for other people. And especially we live as members of a family. And that's what makes the meaning and that's what gives the joy to life. However, I would like to speak very briefly this afternoon to our young families in the about two relationships, 
two people who are the most important persons in their life. Two relationships without which every other relationship, no matter what it might be, does not make any sense. Two people without whom our lives would have no meaning and no purpose. The first person who is the most important person in your life, the first person who makes the real difference in your life is God. It's God. That's true for all of us. We wouldn't be here this afternoon, none of us, if it were not for God. Every single breath that we take, we're not even aware of, we're breathing. Every time our heart takes a beat, we're not even aware of that, our heart beating so many times a minute. Every time those things happen, they only happen because God allows them to happen. God is conscious of each and every one of those actions that we're not. And God allows them to take place. God made us. We came into this world not by an accident of evolution, but each and every one of us came into this world from the hand of God himself. He poured his very life inside of us. He created us. We wouldn't be here if it were not for God. God didn't make us because he had to. God would be God, and God would be perfect, and God would be all happiness whether he created us or not. God created us because he loves us. He loves us. He didn't create us because he wanted a world in which he can lord it all for us, that he's God and we're his creatures. He created us because he wants us to be happy. To be happy the way he is happy as God. Imagine that God created you because he wants you to be happy. To be happy the way he is happy as God. He wants you to be happy the way God is happy. <clears throat> if I were to ask any one of you, do you want to be happy? The answer should be a resounding yes, I'm good. That's the way God made you. He made you to want to be happy. If anyone were to say no, something's wrong. God didn't create us because he wants life to be difficult and burden. Go around with our heads down. Many times we think that's what religion is all about. That's far from the case. God created us because he wants us to be happy. And if you ever notice, you're always looking for something to make you happy. Every day, it doesn't day, it doesn't go by. But you're not looking for something to make you happy. No matter what it might be, that's a natural desire inside of everyone to want to be happy. And that's a good thing. God made us that. What we're looking for, though, that happiness that we're looking for, that person that we're looking for, that thing that we're looking for to make us happy is God himself. He made us with a drive inside of us to look for a relationship with him. That's what life is all about. Now, God wants us to have other people in our lives, obviously, obviously. And he wants us to have good things in our lives. That's a wonderful thing. But whenever anything else becomes more important than God himself, or whenever we start seeing things apart from God, we're going to find inside of us an emptiness, a yearning, or longing, sometimes an unhappiness, because we're missing what's centered for us. I'm sure our young people here have heard or perhaps heard stories or read articles or seen specials on TV. I'm thinking of one in particular of celebrity who seem to have everything going for them. Very famous, very popular, own a great deal, can't go any place without crowds of people following them. Anything they want, they can have. Sometimes we find out about those people. Again, I'm thinking of something that I heard about recently. Those people are very unhappy. They go from one marriage to another marriage to another marriage to another marriage. They take drugs sometimes in order to cover up the pain that's in their lives because they can't face it. We say to ourselves, how could it possibly be that someone who has so many things to buy anything they want is so popular, everybody looks up to, how could somebody like that be unhappy? Well, kind of reason is because they have made those other things more important than God himself. And they push God out of the picture. And no matter what it is, no matter how expensive it is, if God's not there, we can't be happy. It's as simple as that. And the reason is because God made us for himself. God has to be central in our lives to each and every one of us. 
And that's why it's so wonderful that the young people are here that we need to believe that. We know that God has to be the center. God wants you to have many good things in your life. He wants you to do that. But he's got to be a part of the picture. A center of it. And that's what the Holy Spirit is going to help you understand even more as he comes to you and say it The second most important person in your life is you. You. When God created you, he created you for a relationship with himself. That's what he created you for, a relationship with himself. And when he made you, he made you the best person he could make. God didn't make anybody better than you. In fact, before God made the world and the stars and the sky and the universe, he thought of you. Not as a group, but individually, one by one, what you would look like, what you would do, a special talents and abilities he's going to give to you and only to you, to nobody else. And it's something that you're going to do that's going to make a difference in this world that only you can do. Nobody else. No president, no celebrity, no more of you. Only you can do it. God made you single, individual, unique, and special. And he made you the best that he can make. We're all different, but all the best that God can make. Many times when we're young, when we do this as we get older, too, we look at other people and we say, see how I wish I could do that. Ever do that? I think that person is smarter than I am, that person is old more than I am, that person is better looking than I am. Sometimes, especially when we're in a group, especially when we're in a group, we say things and we do things and we act in a certain way. Not because we really do it by ourselves or say something by ourselves, but because we think if I say that, if I do that, I'll be accepted. I'll be liked. I'll be looked up to. We do what other people want us to do because we're afraid to be ourselves because we think it's not good enough. What we don't realize is while we're doing that, others are looking at you and saying, gee, I wish I could be like that. I know of young people. I know of young people who have harmed their lives forever because they're afraid to say no to somebody who wants them to do something that's wrong. They know it's wrong, but they're just afraid to say no because they think that's what will make them accept. Rather than be the person God has made them to be, the special, unique, wonderful person God has made them to be, they'll give it to somebody else and ruin their lives. When God made you, He made you the best He can make. Don't look at somebody else and say, I want to be like that. Be the person God has made you to be. Love and respect the person God has made you to be. You know, you never love or respect anybody else unless you love and respect yourself first. And if you do that, God wants you to do that, and everything else will fall into in a few minutes, the Holy Spirit is truly going to come to you. He's going to come to you because God loves you. God himself is going to come and make a home right inside you. That's how much God loves you. That's how special you are. That's how much God wants you to be. As I told you before, that Holy Spirit is going to speak to you. He really is. It's not the way I'm speaking to you now, but in quiet and gentle way, guiding you, leading you, to that relationship with God and lead you to a deeper relationship with yourself so that you can give yourself more fully to other people. Listen to the Holy Spirit inside of you. Keep God centered in your life. That's not easy to do. That's hard to do. It takes work. But that's what's going to make you happy. And when you do that, you'll love and you respect yourself and you'll have a joy. You'll have a happiness that no one else and nothing else. As the Holy Spirit now truly comes down upon these wonderful young people, may He fill them with His presence, and may all of us, may all of us recognize the gift of the Holy Spirit inside of us, and the family, family which is the church and its individual family. May we make all of our relationships centered on God, the love that we should have for ourselves and each other. When we begin to do that, and we have to do that every day, the joy that we want to have just joy God will become more and more a In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
Yes, I'm happy to plan to mention now the six steps. As you know now, I'm going to ask you to renew your baptismal promises. These were the promises which your parents and godparents made for you when you grew up to church as young children. This afternoon, you make those promises on your own behalf. When you say, I do to these questions, you're saying you reject those things that will lead you away from God, that you believe in God and the Son of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit who you're going to receive, and that you want to continue to live as a follower of Christ in this family and in the church. Don't be afraid to say, I do with faith and with conviction. It makes a difference to all of us. So I ask you, do you reject Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? Amen. Do you believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, the Creator of heaven and of earth? Amen. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and now is seated at the right hand of the Father? Amen. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who is seated at the right hand of the Father? was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, rose from the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who came upon the Apostles of Pentecost? And this afternoon will be given to you, sacramentally, in confirmation. Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of God, and life everlasting? Good. This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are all proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Ask our candidates now. While you're kneeling, all of us are going to pray for you. We pray that as the Holy Spirit now comes down upon you, you'll recognize his presence as well as the special gifts he brings you. My dear friends, in baptism, God our Father gave you the birth of eternal life to his chosen sons and daughters. Let us together pray to our Father that he will pour out the Holy Spirit to strengthen these sons and daughters with his gifts and anoint them to be more like Christ, the Son of God. All powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, my Lord and the Holy Spirit, who freed your sons and daughters from sin and gave them new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon them to be their helper and guide. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill them with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. We ask this through Christ. Peter, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, be sealed with the 
gift of the Holy Spirit.
Thanks, Dad. My dear friends, let us now be one in prayer to God our Father as we are one in the faith, the hope, and the love which His Spirit gives. For these sons and daughters of God, confirmed by the gift of the Spirit, that they give witness to Christ by love, by lives built on faith and love, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For their parents and godparents, who led them in faith, that by word and example, they may always encourage them to follow the way of Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the Holy Church of God, in union with John Paul, our Pope, and all the bishops, that God, who gathers us together by the Holy Spirit, may help us grow in unity of faith and love until his Son returns in glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers for all people of every race and nation, that they may acknowledge the one God as Father and united as brothers and sisters, seek his kingdom, which is peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a greater respect for the sanctity of life and the dignity of every human person, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood and religious life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, you send your Holy Spirit upon the apostles. And through them and their successes, you give the Spirit to your people. May his work be done in Pentecost continue to grow in the hearts of all who believe. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation. For your goodness we have this bread to all for which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation. For your goodness we have this wine to all for the fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spirit. Pray, <laughs> <coughs> my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice will be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord
let us proclaim the mystery of faith.
Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, happy are those who are called to the suffering. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be